Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to my Tamiya Deuce and a Half uh, truck build. So we're going to be building this very kind of thinner build kit from 1997. And we're going to be building it more or less completely out of the box. With just some very basic um, homemade updates that we're just going to add, add one or two small details. As well as adding some storage and some figures. So this kit came out in 97. So, you know, it's getting on in its years. However, this is really like the, the bread and butter of the Tamiya kits I grew up with. And uh, I've always wanted to build one. And these uh, cargo trucks, these GMCs, are arguably some of the most important vehicles really from over to. They get a bit overshadowed by the more exciting stuff. So like in all flatbed trucks or uh, soft skin vehicles, we're going to be starting off with the assembly for the chassis. Now, like all Tamiya kits, these are really well laid out instructions, so it's quite easy to follow the steps. And we're just going to start building through the various parts of the axles. Um, you do have options of what type of um, configuration do you want, so I'm going for the winch configuration. And I'm just going to uh, start assembling here, just using the string that's supplied in the kit for the tow cable. And I'm just going to use a little bit of CA glue and just use a bit of activator just to lock that down very quickly. And once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to take a little bit again, some liquid CA, and just lock that down. And just give a little hit of uh, activator just to uh, create an instant bond, just so we can keep moving with the build. And there we have it. It's not too clean. However, we're just going to lock it down with a little bit of quick setting extra tin. And just being careful to position in such a way that none of the glued down sections are visible. So moving on to the engine, so we're not going to be doing much detailing of the engine because we're not going to really display it that where it can be seen. However, considering how old this kit is, it's not um, a terrible engine assembly really, like it's, um, it's a bit simplified yes, but it's actually quite nicely detailed in its own right. So one thing I have to say is the, the fit of this kit is absolutely fantastic. Everything behaves exactly the way as you would expect from a Tamiya kit. There's no um, strange alignments or anything that's unclear. It all kind of goes together very well. However, I'll always say when you're building the chassis assemblies for any of these type of vehicles, um, do take your time and study the instructions just to ensure that you're putting parts in the right locations because you know, these, these assemblies, especially when we get into the leaf spring suspension systems, can be a little bit busy. One thing I've done in this build too, just so I thought I'd mention, is I haven't shown any of the clean up of parts. So there were some seam lines on the chassis um, A-frames that I just had to scribe, uh, scribe down with the back of my hobby blade just to remove those seam lines. However, um, you guys know how to do that, so it's not really the point showing that. Thank you. 
Now moving on to the rather large fuel tank that's uh, included in the kit. Just be a little bit careful with assembling this if you're using something like extra tin. Um, because it's very easy to leave fingerprints on such a white surface if any of this glue kind of seeps out. Now we're moving on to the uh, drive trains and axles and as you can see this is a quite a, a big assembly and unfortunately none of the um, axles are workable however um, you, you probably can do it by just modifying parts and just uh, um, cutting them to shape however I kind of want to keep this build kind of simple. There are aftermarket um, sets available for workable steering um, I believe ResiCast does a few resin ones however um, I kind of just wanted to keep this as simple now with the box as possible just uh, just to see what type of end result we can get with just, uh, just what's included in the kit. So now moving on to installing the axles and the drivetrain. Now you can see that I've switched to Revell Contacta here, so I want a slightly slower setting glue so I just have time to work with parts and I'm not having to rush before the glue dries because uh, Tamiya Extra Tin does dry very quickly. So sometimes you do want a slow setting uh, glue just for big assemblies like this. And again, everything just kind of falls into place. It's a fantastically well designed kit. I was locking in our very large um, fuel drum, or fuel tank, should I say. And then some of the last bracing details for the, the chassis. So now we're moving on to the uh, driver's cab or the compartment and we're going to kind of assemble this in such a way that certain parts are removable so we can do some painting later on. So just adding the various different brakes and gear shifts and um, other little like uh, levers and uh, doodads inside the inside the cab here. Now these are kind of fragile. I do actually end up snapping those double uh, gear shifts there. So um, I had to kind of carefully go back and uh, glue them back together. And I'm just gonna add in the firewall which kind of sits at um, like a, a slight angle facing into the cab. Now we're going to do the uh, hull sides. Now the, the trick here I find is actually just test fit first just to see how things align. I glue on one side first naturally enough and then once that's set then I just take some extra tin and lock it in place. And because this is the quick set version of extra tin, it, it does um, bond very quickly, so you don't have to hold things in place for too long. But again, just taking time to make sure these things line up correctly. So moving on to the headlights, these are kind of basic, they're just um, <laughs> kind of um, elliptical like voids if you like. And some of these older kits on the smaller details can be a little bit kind of blocky or simplified. So 
So now I'm just going to come in and paint the radiator and for that I'm just going to take a little bit of Vallejo flat black. And the reason why I do this is that it's just very hard to come in later on and paint this in once the grills are in place. So the idea is later on I'll just come in and mask that and uh, we can paint the model around it then. So now I'm going to mount the driver's cab to the, the mud flaps. So this assembly is actually very well put together. Like I never, I didn't really get any fit issues or anything like that. Which, again, it's it's just because everything's very well. Um, Heat that things don't miss a line. So if you just take your time, you'll get some beautiful fits. So I also painted the back of the grills black as well. However, I found out that I might not have actually had to do that because the friction fit on the grill is so well, um, so good, that it'll actually fit in place itself. So I can actually leave that loose and then remove it to paint the, the grill separately. So now I'm going to add the um, rear view mirror. I will snap this off so many times in this build. Um, so I would recommend being very careful how you handle the model once you once you add the, um, the rear view mirror because it is so easy to snap it. Now we're moving on to the cargo bay. Now you can see that I've scraped down a lot of the pin marks. There's quite a few uh, pin injection marks on the inner faces of these cargo um, panels here. So I did have to scrape them down and then come back in with um, my hobby blade to re-scribe in some of the wood texture. So that did take a little bit of time. Um, so it's just something to be aware of when you're building your own kit. And I just used a little bit of The only thing is again you see me I'm switching back to my slow setting contact the glue because I just do I want to have a little bit of leeway when I'm working with these panels so I have time to kind of align things correctly and make sure everything is square. then before things set there just add the tailgate and then just make sure everything's popped in together and nice and square gonna add some of the underside details uh, not much of this is visible but it's just uh, some little like kind of a frames and things like that So we're going to add the mud flaps. Now, you could take that side of your hobby blade and score the edges to make them in more in scale. So you get like a knife edge point. Um, be honest with you, I really couldn't be bothered. Um, you can do it if you wish. Uh, for me, they're, they're fine the way they are. I was happy just to leave them as is. The only thing I did was I removed some pin injector marks on the inner side of them you can kind of see where I've scribed the, the center of those panels.
So they are a bit overscaled, however, again, you can just take the side of your, of your hobby blade and scribe down and pare down those edges and you'll get a more scaled appearance. For me, I, I was just happy just to um, kind of have a fun build for once. I was, I was doing too many complex stuff. Now moving on to the uh, Pioneer tools. It's a very simple assembly. It's only really a shovel that fits in place. And it does have some basic molded strap detail. I also just added two of the, um, the canvas roof mounts here just to give a, an impression of them. Um, these are probably a little bit overscaled, but maybe too thick. But it should be fine. Uh, once it's painted up, um, it shouldn't look too bad. So now we're moving on to the many, many wheels. And do not worry, I'm not going to go through every wheel here. They go together very well. They are, they're hard plastic wheels. So you don't have to worry about any uh, deterioration of the final rubber wheels that you get in some kits over years. And I just use a bit of Revel Contacta here, just so I have a bit of time to align things. So moving on to the tarp for the uh, driver compartment or driver cabin, and like it's it's okay, it's it's just a big plastic block and there's no um, canvas detail inside it. So I decided that it might be fun for us to try to recreate our own one out of putty. We're going to try just do some very basic um, self-made details here, a little bit of scratch building. Using the original part, I just use it to create a template of our dimensions for our tarp. Now to create our tarp you can use different type of putties you want. In this case I'm going to use uh, Milliput. This is their um, super fine I think and this is like a two-part epoxy putty. And my reason for using this is you can roll this out really, really thin, like, like wafer thin. So just using a little, little piece of glass. So these are like the glass panes you get in those cheap picture frames that many of us, including myself, use for diorama bases. So I tend to keep those panes and I use them for working with putty because they act as a great uh, rolling um, surface. Now just taking a little bit of baby powder or talc powder and we're just going to um, coat our work surfaces in this and this stops the putty from um, sticking onto our work surface. So I'm going to take equal parts um, of the two uh, different compounds or the two different sections and just start working them together. And once they've been worked into a nice solid consistent color, I'm going to use just, um, as you can see here, like a rattle can that I just coat in talc and that's going to be our rolling pin. And I just start rolling it out, just applying firm pressure as I roll, and you can see it immediately begins just to uh, spread out. So once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to take a straight edge and just dipping my blade in a little bit of water, I'm just going to start creating, I'm just going to start cutting straight edges and that's going to make up the dimensions of our tarp. Uh, once I'm happy with the dimensions, I'm just going to apply a little bit of cling film or surround wrap, I think it's called in the States, um, around our um, cab here, just so I can um, use that as a means to position our tarp. Now I start applying this and you know it's 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 it becomes a bit tricky to the point where I'm just like actually I'm gonna get rid of the cling film so I can just mold it directly onto the plastic. And I'm working with it and you know it's becoming a bit difficult. Now in reality these tarps and covers on top of the cab here are actually two parts. And I see an interesting picture of just the back panel in place. So I end up cutting off the roof section and then I just start to um, work with the, the back panel here because I, I found it kind of interesting.
and I just keep my fingers dampened in water. Now I should have moistened the um, actual plastic too, just to help it bond. However, um, it will it, it will lock in place, but you just take your time. Now you will get fingerprints on this type of putty. However, it's very easy to remove it. You just take a, a paintbrush that's been dipped in water, and you can just basically erase any fingerprints that way. So I leave the putty to dry for 24 hours, and now it's rock hard. And now I'm going to add some other small details. So there was like a, a safety line, if you like, um, or safety belt that went across the uh, the uh, doorways here. And I'm just going to create our own kind of approximation um, of that detail. So I'm just going to take a small amount of 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter copper wire and bend it into loops and glue those in place. And then just taking a little bit of Tammy tape or Tamiya tape, I'm just going to uh, create those and just link them into it. Um, it's a bit simple, however, I, th I think it's a nice little um, achievable detail that you can add yourself that even with even without a lot of um, experience working with uh, kind of scratch building, it it's, it's very achievable. So now we're going to start adding some stowage to our cargo compartment and for this we're going to be using some sets from Gecko Model. We're also going to be using sets from MiniArt, which um, are very good sets, get lots of different type of oil and um, uh, fuel cans, as well as using some from my spare bins box which are the jury cans included in Asuka model kits. So I'm really impressed by the Gecko Model. Um, value jury can sets. So they're molded in eight can blocks and you basically assemble just the top ends and even the way they're designed that uh, you don't have a seam line going through the middle of them. It really makes me want to do a big fuel dump di diorama now with just like a sea of these like stacked cans. And many hours later, I have loads of jerry cans and fuel drums um, that I've either built from the Gecko models or my mini art set, and then some from the spare bits. Now, I want to add a bit of a crewman to just uh, to our cargo compartment, just to add a bit of sense of scale and uh, the human connection to it or human touch. And I'm just going to take the new Tamiya US Tank Crew set, and I'm going to take the um, I think it's like the nicest figure in the entire set, which is the guy in the uh, in the overalls. It's an interesting model this one, I, I haven't built any of the new Tamiya figures and they are very nice, they are neons better than the original model or Tamiya figures from the 80s and 90s and these are absolutely gorgeous and it's kind of interesting how they, they were kind of like in half so you kind of sandwich two halves together so I, what I normally do is I'll uh, put quite a bit of glue down and let it, let it ooze out of the seam and then once it's dry as you can see here I just kind of scribe it down with uh, just applying gentle pressure just to blend that seam together.
So now we're going to start working on the composition for our stowage in the cargo compartment here. So I'm not going to glue anything in place. The only thing I've done here is I've glued um, the uh, gecko jerry can blocks in strips of two, just so I have um, a little bit of stability. And what I really want to do here is I just want to give the idea of a vehicle coming in to resupply an armored unit. So it will loads of fuel and uh, um, other types of um, necessities that they need for like uh, operations. So I'm just going to use the the blocks here just to build the, the bed of fuel. Now if I spot a second set I could literally have this stacked up really high. And then I'm going to start taking both German jury cans from an AFE kit that I have lying around in my spares box. And both the and also the and also just going to apply the uh, Asuka model US jury cans as well which are beautifully detailed as well. And they're going to be kind of left loose just you know once they've thrown around the place maybe these are empty or just or they're in the process of moving stuff around, or whatever way you want to quantify it. So I also have a German fuel drum and an allied fuel drum in the corner, again just to act as a, a way of filling up a bit of space, because I didn't have enough jerry cans for all of it. And it's also going to be a way just to add a little splash of colour that you might see a little bit of Dunkelgelb in certain places, as well as the Olive Drab. Um, the, the Allies did repurpose like German jerry cans, so that's something that they did do. I also take some of the... Um, funnels from the mini art set just to add a little bit of interesting detail so there you have it um, once we have worked out our stowage arrangement um, you can see you can build a lot of character into these vehicles and i haven't gone too mad with stowage so i just added a few resin tarps from my spare bins box and um, i've also um, added a a suka model like a kerosene lantern because i think having a naked flame round fuel is hilarious and i added that myself and uh, as you can see here, you can go completely mad adding storage to these. Um, I kind of kept it a little bit tame, but even then it still has a lovely bit of character. And I hope this gives uh, you some ideas what you can do with these older kits out of the box. Um, this was an absolutely great bit of, uh, great fun to, to build this. And exactly what I needed to cleanse my, my palette from doing some more complex builds. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been Shane, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.